Hey, long time no see. It's been a little while. It's been about a month actually since I put a video up and for good reason. I've been driving all over the country. Actually, I filmed Roadkill, a couple episodes there. I went drag boat racing with my dad. I took a long road trip in JLo, which was great because I learned all kinds of things about that truck I didn't know. And we'll talk about that during this episode. Right now, I'm going to show you guys, some of you guys asked, how do you load a drag boat that's on a trailer inside of an enclosed trailer? I'm going to show you how we do that right now. And that's literally the reason I bought that Chevy Crew Cab Dually, was I needed a stout truck that would haul that 34 foot enclosed trailer. And uh, it does the job. Not without a few problems, which we'll talk about during this video. And at the end, my buddy Matt and I are going to finally give away the grill from the ramp truck. If you saw episode 26 where we put a new grill in the ramp truck, I promised whoever made the best comment and on that video was going to win some FSM swag and that rusty tubular grill. Well, it's finally happening. So hopefully there's something in this video you guys are into, whether it's drag boats or Duramax dualies or, you know, free crap. Oh yeah, one more thing. Thank you for subscribing, and thanks for telling your friends. The support has been amazing, and it's really motivated me to keep putting content up on this channel. So, you guys keep watching, I'll keep filming down here. Alright? Let's go. Boats in the trailer. Let's jack her on up because we are going to hitch our boat trailer right to the floor. Right there. That is a receiver welded into the floor between a cross member. You'll have to go almost all the way up there, Daniel. guide this so that it sits down on there flat. There we go. Okay, hold it. The wheel shock, there you go, that might work. I was gonna say the wheel shock might be keeping the boat from going backwards. Alright, keep going. You gotta be gentle with these things now. Yes. A little loving. Yeah, the boat's got to roll backwards a hair. Yeah, I'm gonna take the chop out. It's like a Almost there. Okay, roll. Uh, go. And stop. You're there. Okay, here's your pin. Voila! Chop's out. Ooh. She's secure. All we gotta do now is strap down the back. And that, my friends, is how you put a boat on a trailer inside of a trailer. I'm about to blow your mind right now. I don't go to the gym much. And because of that, I can't push my boat into this trailer. But I have helped. The guy who put this trailer together installed a winch right inside this cabinet, and it's got a wireless remote. So all you do is spool the winch out, hook it to the boat trailer, drag the boat in, put that away, close the door, tie the boat down to the trailer, Done. It's just that easy. Harbor Freight.
about 6,000 miles, this was my office. Here's what I learned about JLo while towing that trailer all the way home from Arizona. Learned? This truck with me in it weighs 7,900 pounds, and I'm a buck 85 soaking wet, so this is a little over a 7,700 pound pickup. Um, the truck with the trailer hitched to it, and I've already measured the tongue weight of the trailer, it's 1,150 pounds, but the truck with the trailer hitched to it has 9,780 pounds on it um, with me in it. Um, the truck and trailer combined on the scale, 19,940 pounds. If you do the math, if you take away the weight of the truck from the weight of the total package, that trailer with the drag boat in it, a 55 gallon drum of fuel, all the spares, all the tools, uh, 55 pound leather bottle of nitrous, you know, all kinds of stuff in there, everything I need to go racing. That trailer back there is about 12,000 pounds. So it is not light. You know, it's an all steel constructed ultra hauler, 34, 34 foot long trailer. It is not light. The truck has plenty of power, pulling it no problem, especially up hills. The issue is when you go up hills and you try to maintain 65, 70 miles an hour, this thing gets hot. I saw trans temps climbing up to 200 degrees. I saw engine temps that hit 226. And the next thing I know, the edge programmer here is flashing red and telling me to slow down. So I did. And um, you drop down to 55 miles an hour. Engine temps are normal. You know, it's sitting right on the thermostat at about 205. But the trans temp would still get to 190 to 195 degrees which is hotter than I want to see. I normally like my transmission temps to be around 180. They seem to last longer that way. So I came home, Daniel and I disassembled the front end of the truck uh, at the suggestion of a couple of friends of mine. They said, dude, I bet everything's dirty under there. I bet the radiator's clogged, the intercooler's clogged, the transmission cooler's clogged with junk. And this truck now has about 76,000 miles on it. And I guessed it had never been taken apart and cleaned. And sure enough, pulled the intercooler out of the middle and found practically a bird's nest between the intercooler and the radiator. It ate something, a pterodactyl or something? Mm -hmm. Look at that. I don't have feathers. Now look, the bottom of this is sealed. So mm -hmm. somehow all of that got between the intercooler and the radiator. There was even some mud packed into the backside of the radiator. I mean, it was filthy. And so I've done nothing but clean those items with a power washer. get on the freeway go find myself a big hill because we're getting close to operating temp here and we'll find out how she does yeah buddy 70 miles an hour up a grade 150 degrees of transfluid temp and the engine is about 205 I think it's fixed
There she is. Would you be in charge of this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. <coughs> this is going to be amazing. Oh my god. Now this is the grill off of the ramp truck. The one I replaced, the stainless steel <laughs> tubular grill that I replaced with shiny parts from the MC truck. And uh, I made a comment about how my favorite comment of that video would win this and an FSM shirt and hat and stickers and whatever else. Uh, you're a glutton for punishment. You should get more than the grill as far as I'm concerned. 6,748 comments. <laughs> really? I mean, it ain't that nice. Does that include replies? I didn't look at any reply. I just looked at the header, and that was it. You didn't look at any of the uh, applause. Just, no, I just the yeah, comments. All the golf claps can stay out of this. I just want—I want the meat and potatoes. I want to know how that works. Like, do the do the replies count, or is it just the original? It's your channel, man. You tell me. If I knew what I was doing, the sound would be better. <laughs> it really would. You the, want better sound? Get better speakers. The jokes would be better. Uh, all of that. Um, okay, so enough. before we get started, um, Vanna White, show them oh. what they're going to win. Like, spin it around. <laughs> so on top of bug guts, you're also getting, here's the business side. A considerable amount of All rust. Right. So there is your stainless steel grill. <laughs> um, it looks like it's been a grill on a barbecue joint for quite some time. This first is just off, decorative. First off, the barbecue <laughs> comments, those were the most obvious. And yeah. the first one was humorous. It was, I'll admit. Yeah. But obvious. So probably God, not terrible. winning with a uh, shrimp on the barbie comment. Probably not. But uh, there's what you will win should we select your comment right now. It, and again, I'm really excited you're here because <laughs> tell them the story about the day you borrowed the ramp truck because I, I really don't think you'd ever come back here again after that. I shouldn't have. I, I, I thought about it. So I borrowed ramp truck to get my 72 Blazer back from Virginia. Um, to Georgia. To Georgia from here. Not a short drive. No. No, as it turns out, it's even longer when you borrow the ramp truck. <laughs> I was, in, I was in Mike's house when we were hanging out, and I told him the story. I had to go back and get my truck. He said, well, hey, come on. I got something for it. And he, and he brings it downstairs, and he shows me his Ram truck. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. It scares the crap out of me. I don't want anything need to do with that. He but says, you, but it, your truck wouldn't fit on a U-Haul trailer. Right. And I said, well, that son of a bitch is going to fit on my Ram truck. Right. <laughs> and yep. I just drove it from California to Georgia. Had so I she's listened legit. to my gut, I think I'd be $1,000 richer at this point. And you'll understand why. So I say, yeah, cool, ramp truck. That's awesome. Uh, I'm in a ramp truck, and the looks I'm getting driving this thing are pretty fun. So I'm building credit here. He's driving down the road in the ramp truck. People think you know, it's a ginger fest. They think he's uh, he's me. They think. Because there was an FSM in the back. I'm like, yeah, cool. So I put the hat on low. I had a, I had a thicker beard at the time. And I'm, people are stopping. They're kind of wondering, is that Mike? I'm like, no, it's not Mike, dude. No. So I drive up, and I leave early morning. And the headlights are on, so I think. And I'm driving through Tennessee. And I get pulled over in Tennessee because one of the headlights is out. Um, it was around 6.30 in the morning. So I managed to talk to the officer back and forth. Hey, I, I was just about to turn them off. I'll, I'll go and replace the headlight when I get to Virginia. No problem. So I, I, I'm out of that ticket. And I had forgotten that one of the headlights was out, even though I knew it, because when I drove it from California to Georgia, I noticed it was out, attempted to replace it, but all the screws were stripped. Yes, they so were. So I just left it alone and yes, kept trying. It was not an easy repair, let me tell you. So the road trip continues. <clears throat> and uh, Mike had said, hey, just leave it in auxiliary. Um, it, the, the gas gauge doesn't work. You'll get about 250 miles, and you should and think about pulling over to fill it up. Great. 125 miles down the road, I'm sputtering. Uh, I end up coasting off of an exit ramp into a gas station and put over $100 worth of gas into the auxiliary tank, thinking, okay, Mike was wrong. Uh, I get 125 now miles to the, to the tank on this thing, which is like maybe four, four <laughs> miles per gallon. <laughs> Right downhill with the wind behind you. So I leave the gas station now, headed up towards Virginia. Um, run out of gas again, coast in about 100 miles, thinking that maybe I was pushing it. Maybe this ramp truck was maybe doing a little over 55. Built for comfort, not yeah, speed. Yeah, exactly. Right, uh, right. And comfort is a stretch. So I pull off again, coasting into a gas station, put another 100 bucks in a ramp truck, uh, and then continue on my way. I then get pulled over in Georgia. Um, and the trooper that pulls me over, I don't know why he pulled me over. I wasn't speeding. Um, and I, he, he, I pulled the truck over to the side of the road. And it was all the gas you were dumping <laughs> yeah. on the ground. <laughs> there was a smell, apparently, from, from Georgia up to Virginia that nobody could figure out. So he walks up to the passenger side of the truck. He looks in. He goes, no, I pulled you over. I said, I really have no idea. I said, maybe you're a fan. I don't know. I said, that's the only reason I can think of why you're pulling me he over. the fan card. And he said, now, this was what? A, um, this was May. Yeah. I think it was May. And the tags on a Ram truck expired in February. So, officer, 
asked me for the registration, and I said, I really hope I have it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is it. All right, cool. What is this? That's a business. Is it yours? No. Is the truck yours? No. <laughs> Whose is it? It's my buddy Mike's. Is this his company? <laughs> yes. So your friend, is this his company? Like, yes, it must be, right? It's his company. It's his name's Mike. So this M in the, there's an M in the name somewhere. Like, this is Mike Finnegan. This is his company. Yes, his truck. Um, well, your friend's tags are expired. Awesome. Figured it would be. Great. Thank you. Um, officer, it I It was insured, though. I didn't get the insurance. <laughs> I said, I have m maybe two hours to go. Can I, can I just go? Uh, he says, where are you going? Tell him I'm going to get my truck. Well, he's like, oh, he's a fan now of my truck. He could care less about Ram truck. Now he wants to talk about my piece of crap that I have. He was a blazer guy. He was a blazer guy, okay. which is funny. Mm -hmm. uh, who knew? Uh, so he lets me go because he wants no part of uh, not my truck, not my state, not my business, not a registered vehicle. <laughs> He's like, dude, just get the hell out of Georgia as soon as you possibly can. Uh, so the next morning I go and I get my truck loaded up on top. I got a center picture to Mike. The bed is on the tire. It's, so this it, is a, uh, what year? 72. 72 Chevrolet K5 Blazer, four wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And you, you drove it up on the ramp truck. Lifted a bit. And squatted the ramp truck. Squatted. Tires touching the bed. Like, won't move. And I, he truck. calls me, and I'm sitting there going, I'm surprised you picked up. Thank you for picking up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there going, how's this even possible? Because we, we went to Bonneville with this truck. We put Freiburger's Salt Flat Camaro on there, a car filled with lead. It weighs 5,000 pounds, maybe in six, he said. It's heavy. And we hauled it, and, and the tires never touched the bed. Or we ignored it. I don't know. Probably Could better. that be... Maybe why there are no springs left in ramp truck is you're taking a lead-bound vehicle to Bonneville. Maybe. So he's calling me, and I'm like, well, hmm, what can you do? What can you do? Can't go get a trailer because your car won't fit on a trailer. Um, dude, get some air shocks. <laughs> Hold some air shocks on the back of that son of a gun. You'll get home, I swear. I wasn't even in town, I think, when this happened. I think I was gone, and uh, I felt bad. I think you were in Kansas. I felt bad. So, moral of the story, he drove all the way there to Virginia and came all the way back without his vehicle. Yes. But with, how many times did you get pulled over? I got pulled over three times in total. Three times. Now, the kicker of the story is on the way back without my truck in tow, I'm on the side of the road in Virginia, out of gas, and I call Mike, and I'm just, I'm ready to lace into him. And he says, why are you driving an auxiliary? I said, because you told me to. He said, well, drive an auxiliary until it fills the gas tank up. Then you switch over to the regular tank and just basically switch back and forth. You'll get about 250 miles. So what he was doing was uh, the ramp truck had a weird fuel system. It had like a 45-gallon auxiliary tank and a switch between the main saddle tank, which is like 16 gallons. And if you switch to auxiliary, it would, the engine would run off that, but it would also gravity feed into the main tank. And once the main tank got full, if you didn't, shut the auxiliary off, it would just keep pumping gas out Spilling to the ground. your money onto the roads of the United States between Georgia and Virginia. <laughs> so I believe you might have gotten a little further had you not just pumped half your fuel out of the truck onto Mother Earth. Yes, I was Finnegan. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he showed up. Truck's still here. <clears throat> We're still friends. Excuse me. Um, Let's give away something. <laughs> you have notes. You have notes. I, I told you. You have favorites? I, I, have, I have some favorites. I have some people like, like what the F was going on? Okay, so um, yeah. the goal was put up a comment on YouTube that was uh, funny, hysterical, informative, whatever. My favorite, which has now become our favorite, because we both have half a soul. We're gingers. We're sharing this deal. Mm -hmm. And notice we're indoors. Yeah. We don't like the sun. No. no. All right, lay it on me. What do we got? What's so, number one in your uh, list there? Number one, this guy, Justin Sorrell, he, lo he threw out a lame, like, come online. Like, I, have, I put the STD in stud, all I need is you. <laughs> and I think that was supposed to go to the chive.com. I don't think it was meant for Finnegan's Garage. So, <laughs> Justin, keep that crap on the chive. That's, I think that's what they like. We're, we're not into that. I put the STD in stud. That's solid. All right. In yep. the running. Yep. Mario Parn? Parn? You can fry burger on that grill. I <laughs> see what you did there. Clever. <laughs> Tina F says, I want to listen to David Bowie and tweak my nipples while dancing on the roof of my Camaro. Prove it. Um, if we knew what you look like, you might win just because of the visual. 
Uh. Uh, David and Rico, rule number one on the internet, never put your address online. <laughs> uh, I'm going to send you a subscription to men and mittens hugging teddy bears. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, 6265 Mopar says, looks like your friend went out and got himself the Finnegan starter kit. He's got the beard and baseball hat. Now all he has to do is save up for the hairy hands and he'll be set. <laughs> Zero punctuation in that statement whatsoever. Um, and yeah, yeah, my hands are hairy. Um, Austin Voiles, who doesn't want a hot tranny? Yeah. I think we've all had one in our day. Uh, Rob Mart, get better microphones for your camera. Uh, Rob, get better speakers, whatever you're watching. And I'll solve the problem. Please, please. We're, we're wearing microphones but i gotta be honest the guy that edits these videos films them stars in them uh has been hanging around loud engines his entire life and probably not the right guy to be doing audio corrections uh but it is what it is will this fit in my honda yes solid <laughs> if you ever Jimmy ask Mellon. will it fit yes <laughs> logan osborne says my great uncle used to tell me that for christmas he would get a new pair of overalls with pockets cut out. That way, he got something to wear and something to play with. <laughs> okay, Logan Osborne. Um, make a note of that. Logan Osborne. Logan. Um, you got a pen? I don't, but I want to put a pen in it. Over. This time on Motor Trend on the... Oops, wrong channel. <laughs> Does that grill come with strippers? Because it sure is tubular. <laughs> Oh, Peter <laughs> Landrio, you take that back. How much lube does Lou need to lube the tubes on Lou's Subaru if the tubes on Lou's Subaru need lube? Nailed it. That was one take, people. Right? One take. No editing. Let's see. David Garcia, I got one word for you. Spell check. You know what I'm talking about. What does a Mexican cow call his pals? Muchachos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dad jokes. Love them. Love them. <laughs> Wait, read the, read the next one. How many Hispanics does it take to start a tractor? Just one. <laughs> All right, I don't think we've hit, like, the one yet. No, and I'm, uh, I'm out of notes. Is it just me? Wow, butt plug? Really, Jeff Stockwell? <laughs> okay. The ramp truck has officially been liberated from its oppressive prison bar grill and was given a hater-proof plastic grill. All it needed was just the right, right amount of loop. I like the creativity in that one. I do. Uh, Drummond Panda. Let's write that down. Was it Drummond Panda? Austin Navarro says, Finnegan, you are so handsome and your beard is majestic. That dude just might have won. Mm. In the immortal words of Mike Finnegan, that's lower... Oh, that's you can't quote you. You're right, you read it. In the mortal words of Mike Finnegan, lower, lower, lower your expectations until you achieve a goal. Hard to believe, but we've already gone through 6,000 comments. We're almost done. Why do Finnegan's friends all have ginger beards? It's not just this video. Hmm. I never noticed. I answered an ad on Craigslist, and I'm here. You too, people. Answer those crazy ads on Craigslist. Misconnections? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for those curious, the government passed new regulations in the early 70s that required hoods to buckle in the middle in case of a front-end collision, so it would not slice your head off. So hoods were redesigned to have those weak areas built in. Sucks, huh? Really? Did you? You know, if somebody would just commented douchecopter, they would have won. Yeah. I'd have been like, all right, there we go. Yeah. Simple to the point. Mm, oh. Moment. How about this one? Yeah. Corey Moore 1000, I know for a fact, if you walk up to a stranger and put your ear up to their leg and listen really closely, you can clearly hear them say, what the <laughs> f*** are you doing? <laughs> I think he's winning. I think you've won, sir. I think this grill is now yours. That was right. good. What was that name? Uh, Corey Moore 1000. How do we get it to Corey Moore 1000? All right, Corey Moore 1000, at the end of this video is my email address. You, sir, needs to email me proof that it is you. You are you. You have won. And how you can do that, hell, I don't know. Um, Driver's license, which would have your address on there. Sure. Prove that that is an original thought. 
from you, emailed to me. Give me your contact info. I will send you this fine grill. Why was it okay for Johnny Cash basically to sing about stealing his way to a Cadillac, but in real life, that's not good. You can't just steal stuff. Go ahead. I mean, if you don't get caught, it's a good story. It is. It really and is. You can put it, if you can put it to music, well, even better. Great song. So yeah, moral of the story, um, steal whatever you want as long as you write a good song about it. Yeah. Don't yeah. get caught mm. and write a good song.